Okay, in this video we're going to be looking at uh, an introduction to trigonometry. We call this right triangle trigonometry, what we're looking at presently, because all of these uh, problems that we're going to be doing are going to be based on right triangles. And that's where sine, cosine, and tangent come in. You can only use sine, cosine, and tangent for, with a right triangle. There is ways that we can apply sine, cosine, and tangent. There's something called the law of sines and the law of cosines when we're dealing with triangles that are not right triangles. But using the uh, sine, cosine, tangent in the way that we're going to be looking at today in this video, as I said, can only be used when we're dealing with right triangles. So before we get started, let's make sure we understand the parts of a triangle. I know it sounds basic, but it's very important in order to um, understand these uh, trigonometric ratios. First off, uh, when we see this symbol, kind of looks like a zero with a little wavy line through it. That's referring to an angle measure. So in this triangle that they have uh, diagrammed here for us in this box, this angle measure is the angle that we'd be looking for. And the other three sides of the triangle are going to be based on that angle. Well, I guess I should say two of the sides of that triangle. Because every triangle is made up of three sides, we know. The longest side, that's called the hypotenuse. And whenever we're dealing with the right triangle, the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. So that's always a crucial step, looking to see where the right angle is. The side across from that is the hypotenuse. And the other two sides, we call those legs, are based on the angle that we're looking for. So if I'm looking for this angle, we're going to have a side that's across from that angle. So we would say that that is the leg that's opposite of it, so the leg opposite the angle. And then the angle that's next to it, we say that's the leg adjacent to the angle. Adjacent just means next to. Now if, we, if the angle changed, if we were looking at this angle, for example, now the side opposite of it would be the opposite side, and this one would be the adjacent leg. So it's important to recognize that the opposite leg and the adjacent leg are going to change depending on which angle we're looking for. But the hypotenuse always stays the same. Now let's talk about sine, cosine, and tangent. Now sine, cosine, and tangent are what we call trigonometric ratios. Because the sine of an angle is found by taking the opposite leg divided by the hypotenuse. The cosine of an angle is found by taking the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. And the tangent of an angle is found by taking the opposite leg divided by the adjacent leg. Now you have to memorize these, these ratios. They're very important. We're going to be using these throughout this chapter. Now an easy way to remember it is what we call SOKATOA. SOKATOA is just basically an acronym for each of these ratios. SO would be S-O-H. That means, again, the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Ka is C-A-H. Well, that's the same as the cosine is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And toa would be the tangent is equal to the opposite over adjacent. So again, so katoa is going to be very important for you to make sure that um, you know which ratio to use. Now, your calculators, your Inspire calculators are going to be... Um, the default mode is going to be in radian mode. We need to change that to degree mode. And I'm not going to take the time to do that on this video, but if you go to Moodle, I have a uh, diagram that shows the two different versions of calculator. And you can click on those different versions and watch the video of how to get it into degree mode because you want to make sure that you do that. So if you haven't done that yet, why don't you pause the video and then go back to Moodle and then come back and make those changes. So that way you can make sure that you get the right answers. Okay, so now let's see how we use that um, sine, cosine, and tangent. So again, I'm just going to write down that acronym, SOKATOA. Because the thing that people struggle with the most in this lesson, which is not that difficult, is knowing which ratio to use. So if you write that down um, on your homework assignment, if you write this down in the quiz, It'll give you a, a reminder of how to set this up. So a lot of times, or I should say occasionally, they give us a diagram like they did in this picture. But there's going to be other times, like in the next example, where they don't give us um, a picture. So you want to make sure that you know how to draw the triangle. Uh, we'll look at examples like that here in a little bit. 
But here it says, suppose the flagpole casts a 22-foot shadow when the sun is at an angle of 39 degrees with the ground. What is the height of the pole? So we're trying to find the height of this uh, flagpole, which would be the height of our triangle. So, so what you want to do to start these problems is look at how these sides relate to that angle. So the side that we're looking for, x, is opposite that angle. The 22 feet, the 22 foot shadow, is adjacent to that angle. Because remember, this is your hypotenuse. We're not using the hypotenuse right now. So we're using the opposite leg and the adjacent leg. So if I look over here at my three options, the one that uses the opposite and the adjacent is the tangent. So it's going to be the tangent of 39 degrees equals the opposite, which is x, over the adjacent, which is 22. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to multiply both sides by 22 to get x by itself. So in other words, x would be found by taking 22 times the tangent of 39. So let's look at your calculators now. So we're going to take 22 times. Now to access the tangent, if you look over here right next to the 7, there's a trig button. If you click on that trig button, you're going to find tangent. And so it's going to be the tangent of 39. And hit enter. You should get 17.8, or about 18 degrees. Now, if you're not sure if your calculator is in degree mode or radian mode, if you have this version, it's real easy. You just drag your cursor over to the spro uh, sprocket in the top right corner, and we can see then that it's in degree mode. So this is my right answer, 17.8 degrees. Now, in the next one, it says, using the same example, what is the distance from the end of the shadow to the top of the pole? Well, now it's asking me to find the hypotenuse. Now, whenever possible, you want to stick with the original numbers that they give us. Even though we found, whoops, it's not 17.8 degrees, it's 17.8. Even though we found this to be 17.8, technically I could use that. But for one, I rounded, so that's going to mean that my answer for my hypotenuse would not be as accurate. And for two, what if you made a mistake? So you want to make sure that if you have a problem like this on a quiz or a test, that if possible, always go back and use the original uh, numbers that they gave you to find the missing piece. So to find the hypotenuse, I'm going to use the 22 feet, which is the adjacent leg, again, and the y is the hypotenuse. So the ratio that uses the adjacent and the hypotenuse would be the cosine. So it's going to be the cosine of the angle equals the adjacent leg, which is 22, over the hypotenuse, which is y. Now, there's actually a rule in algebra that says that we can switch these two to get y equals 22 divided by the cosine of 39. But the reason why that is, the reason why we can switch those two, is if we go back to this, what we had originally here, if I wanted to, get, if I wanted to solve for y, the only way I could do that is to multiply both sides by y. So that gets rid of the y's here, but now I have y times the cosine of 39 equals 22. Again, I want to get the y by itself, so I divide both sides by cosine of 39. So when I do that, I get y equals 22 divided by the cosine of 39. So now on my calculator, I'm going to do uh, 22 divided by the cosine of 39, which gives me 28.3 as my answer. So it'll be 28.3 feet. Now it's important to understand this next phrase, this angle of elevation, that's the angle that's formed between a horizontal and looking up. So if you, the angle of elevation here for this guy looking at the sun would be if he looks straight across and then looks up, the angle that's formed there would be the angle of elevation. So it's important to understand that term because oftentimes when we're dealing with story problems, they're just going to refer to the angle of elevation. They're not going to tell us what angle that is. So you need to make sure that you know how to figure that out. So it says, the Zephyr Express chairlift in Winter Park, Colorado is a vertical rise of about 490 meters. Suppose the lift travels at an average uh, 16.7 degree angle of elevation. How many meters long is the ride? 
So here we know we're going to be dealing with the right triangle, but we need to get, figure out where to put all these different numbers. Now it says a vertical rise. Vertical rise means exactly what it sounds. Vertical means straight up and down. So if you're standing at the top of the mountain, the vertical rise would be going straight down through the mountain would be 490 meters. Now it says, suppose the lift travels at an average of 16.7 degree angle of elevation. Well, if you're standing down here at the bottom and you look horizontally and then look up, the angle that's formed is your angle of elevation. So this would be 16.7 degrees. And we're looking for how many meters long is the ride. Well, you're not going to be riding along the ground. You're going to be riding up to the top of the mountain. So we're looking for the hypotenuse here. So we look to see how this side, the 490 meters, relates to my 16.7 degree angle. Well, that's opposite the angle. Our hypotenuse is what we're looking for. So we're trying to figure out what ratio uses the opposite and the hypotenuse. Well, if you remember the SOHCAHTOA, that'd be sine. So it's going to be sine of 16.7 equals the opposite, which is 490, divided by x. Again, we just saw a problem like this, so we know we can switch these two around, so it's going to be x equals 490 divided by the sine of 16.7. Do that on your calculator. So we're going to take 490 divided by the sine of 16.7, and you get 1,705.2, or we'll just round to 1,705 meters. Okay, so we're going to skip the next example. We'll get down to this one. Here it says each side in a regular uh, pentagon is 7.8 centimeters. Find the length of the diagonal VO. First off, regular means that it's going to be the same. Uh, all the sides are the same length, and all the angles are the same measure. Pentagon means it has five sides. So I'm going to try to draw, do my best to draw a regular pentagon here. So all the sides are the same. They're all 7.8. And we're calling this uh, pentagon viola. Now what that means is that if we pick any um, vertex, what we want to do is we want to go uh, clockwise so that we're not just going to jump around and have random letters here. We're going to pick a point and then just go in a clockwise manner, so V-I-O-L-A. And it says find the length of the diagonal V-O. So I'm trying to figure out that length is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw this triangle. Now it's not a right triangle. So right off the bat I can't use I can't use sine, cosine, or tangent right off the bat. But here's what I can do. Back in geometry there's a formula to find the measure of interior angles For any polygon, what you do is you take 180 times n minus 2, all divided by n, where n represents the number of sides. So for this pentagon, there's a total of, so, I'm, so what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to figure out what this angle measure is, because it's not 90. So to figure that out, I'm going to take 180 times n, n is um, going to be 5, and 5 minus 2 would be 3, all divided by 5. When you do that on a calculator, you end up getting 108 degrees. So each angle inside this triangle is 108 degrees. So angle I here would be 108. Well, if I draw a line straight down, I'm going to make my right triangle. So what that means is that's going to cut that angle in half. So now what I have there's a right triangle where the hypotenuse is 7.8. And this angle here would be half of 108, which is 54 degrees. And I want to figure out, I'm going to label this Y because it's not the complete side. Remember, well, this is, by drawing that height of that triangle, I've cut that side in half. So I first want to figure out what half of that side would be. Then I'll double it to figure out my answer. So to find out what Y is, 
First, we're going to take this sidewise, the opposite of that angle. And the hypotenuse is what we're going to have. So it's going to be the sine of 54 equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 7.8. When I do that, I get y is going to be 6.3. Again, that's not my answer. That's just what one of these sections is. They're both 6.3. So x, or my length of VO, is 6.3 times 2. Oops. or 12.6 centimeters would be my length of VO. So that problem there that we just covered is a minor thing, but it is good to look at uh, doing a problem like that because you can see how it ties in to geometry. But I want to end this video by looking at a concept that you want to be familiar with. And that too also uh, ties in with what you've talked about in geometry, and that's dealing with 30, 60, 90 triangles and 45, 45, 90 triangles. And that's what we have here. And there's a relationship between the sides here for these different triangles. For example, with the 45, 45, 90 triangle, each of the legs, this is an isosceles triangle, so each of the legs are the same length. We're going to call those n. And the relationship that exists between the hypotenuse and these legs is that the hypotenuse would be n times the square root of 2. So if I, know that, if I know that my two sides here are 5, my hypotenuse would be 5 times the square root of 2. Now with the 30, 60, 90 triangle, we have two legs of different side, sizes and our hypotenuse. Well, everything in the 30, 60, 90 triangle is based on our short leg here, which we'll call that n. So the hypotenuse is actually going to be 2 times whatever n is. And your longer leg is going to be n times the square root of 3. So now the reason why this is important is you'll have to know um, how to find the cosine of a 30 degree angle. And you want to find the exact value. You don't want to just plug this in on a calculator and get a decimal answer. You want to find the exact value for the cosine of 30. And one way to do that is using these triangles. because So the 30 degree angle is going to be, well, the cosine of that is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So your adjacent leg to the 30 degree angle is the n square root of 3. And the hypotenuse would be 2n. Well, if we simplify this, the n's cancel out, so we would have the cosine of 30 is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. And here's what we just found. So again, the square root of 3 over 2, if we type that in a calculator, oops. so the square root of 3 over 2 simplifies to be 0.866. Well, watch what happens when I take the cosine of 30. Cosine of 30 is the same exact value. So the square root of 3 over 2 is the same as the cosine of 30. This is just, we call this, the 0.866 is an estimated or an approximate solution. Square root of 3 over 2 would be the exact solution for the cosine of 30. So again, in your assignment, if you're asked to find some of these different values, then you'll want to have these memorized. But if you wanted to find, for example, let's do one more together. Let's say if we have to do the sine of 45 degrees. 45 degrees is right here. The sine would be the opposite, would be n over n squared of 2. Well, when we cancel out the n's, we, our answer isn't square root of 2 because that's in the denominator. So we're going to have 1 in the numerator after the n's cancel out. But well, we can't leave a square root in the denominator. Remember back in chapter 8, we talked about rationalizing the denominator. So we have to multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 2. And when you do that, you get square root of 2 over, and square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. So the sine of, 400, uh, sine of 45 degrees would be the square root of 2 over 2. So that's how you're going to do some of those other problems. So we're going to stop the video here. So uh, hopefully you have a better understanding of how to uh, use sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, in the next video, you're going to see how we use the same value, same trigonometric ratio, sine, cosine, and tangent, to find the measure of an angle. But for today, uh, good luck on your assignment.